David Warwick Griffith was a famous American film director that was widely recognized for his use and mastering of continuity editing. If you have no idea what continuity editing is, just think about it this way. Two different scenes are occurring simultaneously but parallel to one another. This parallel editing is established by cross-cutting between the two different spaces. We can see this in the example above from the birth of a nation as the KKK is preparing to run towards and save this family the camera cuts between these two different spaces in the first space you have the KKK in the second space you have this poor family waiting to be saved so through continuity editing and cross-cutting the two different spaces are established and are occurring simultaneously his films can be explained as a response to the demands of the transforming film industry. The production, distribution, exhibition, and audience of film was changing drastically during the early 1900s. This change provoked change throughout the entire film industry. The focus had shifted, and it was no longer on film style, but rather on a favor in narrative. By 1908, Griffith's films were the most famous in exemplifying how the use of parallel editing transformed cinema into an art form that could now tell a coherent story. Griffith had changed the way that audiences perceived films because through parallel editing, he was able to establish the temporal marking between two different shots. In other words, prior to Griffith's films at the Biograph Company, time and space were ambiguous in other cinematic productions. Griffith was able to use editing to establish temporal marking unambiguously, which in turn created continuity and simultaneity within a variety of different shots or spatial relations. Griffith was able to use parallel editing in multiple different ways. Depending on the film and on the characters within his films, Griffith would incorporate patterns of editing, alternating between shots for specific reasons. Griffith used parallel editing in different ways that created different meanings for both of his shots and for his characters. Through Griffith's development of parallel editing, he was able to contribute largely to a tradition that was getting close to resembling the invisible editing in the classical Hollywood narrative. We will now shift to Broken Blossoms, a different film directed by D.W. Griffith. Just like in The Birth of a Nation, where extreme tension is built through cross-cutting and parallel editing, we can see the same happening here. Continuity or parallel editing can be used to establish different spaces that are occurring at the same time. But the theme in all of these scenes that we have seen so far and we'll see as this film goes on is all related to the rescue scene. As the camera cuts rapidly between the Asian man running to save his loved woman back to her and her father fighting at their home, tension is built for us and also for the characters in the film itself. And we are eager to wait and see if this man will be able to save the young girl being attacked by her father. Still unsure of what parallel editing means? Think about it like this. By allowing parallel times and spaces to be unified into a single space and time, a particular action scene can be delayed and interrupted various times which causes the audience to feel on edge or anxious for what's to come. Continuity editing is a technique that is clearly a major development in narrative within cinematic productions. Although we may take it for granted today, we should thank D.W. Griffith for mastering this technique and allowing us to be able to tell the time and space within films. And also for the amazing rescue scene that would not be possible without the use of parallel editing.